Hey guys and welcome back. So today we are going to be looking at the new Dapol Mana class. Uh, and yeah, I am really excited for this one. So let's get straight into it. So price wise, now on Dapol's website, you can get this model for I believe it's 159.95 as DCC ready, which this one is. There's nothing extra to this one. This is just like the, the base model, if you will. Then it's £185 DCC fitted, and then you can get this with all the bells and whistles with sound fitted for 259 From what I've seen, that actually sounds like a really, really good price to have it all done and ready for you. So that sounds really good. So let's have a quick look at the packaging. Now, again, we've just got the DAPOL standard packaging you've just got a base sorry get the light out of the way <laughs> we've got the base of how the model looks on the front you've got what it is on the front of the box and if we flip this over as you can see i've taken the model out but again look at this level of packaging you've got i mean as you can see by my thumb there just how well packed and how thick all this packaging is they really do want to look after the customer as well and i think this is a real testament um, you know, to Dapol. I'm really, really excited for this one. So with that being said, let's get into the actual model itself. Okay, so as we can see, here is the model. Now, before we actually have a bit of a closer look at this, we'll just have a very brief look. So we get a detail pack with the etched nameplates in, and we get this little pack. And again, we'll go into this in a little bit more detail later on. So, oh, where do I start with this? This is absolutely wonderful. Let's take the tender out of the way for one minute and let's have a look at the actual main loco itself. And just look at the finish on this. This has got an absolutely wonderful finish. You've got the chrome, chrome effect. Well, not chrome effect, sorry, the shiny brass effect on the top. You've got your separately fitted whistles here. And I'm a bit taken aback by this model when I took it out. I will be honest, just because the amount of detail what is on this. You've got tons of riveting. The paint finish is just so, so well done. Just bringing it round. Let's just check. Yep, yeah, we've got sprung buffers on the front. You've got your NEM coupling. You've even got detail underneath the boiler, which is fantastic. And for me, this is the best bit. Just look at the inside of that cab. It looks like there are a load of separately fitted parts and pieces. Everything is picked out so, so finely with all the dials. And that is just a wonderfully detailed cab, especially for the price where you can pay for this. Now, I did forget to mention, sorry, I'll just pop this down for a second. Um, I paid, <laughs> forgot to put this in the price bit, um, I paid £144 for this. Uh, and I got this from the Paint and Model Railway Shop down in Devon. So if you're in that area, go give them guys a checkout. So, sorry about that, let's uh, get back into this. So, as you can see, we've got the number really nicely applied. You've got the little extra details fitted to this. You've got the wonderful Torquay Manor name. I think that may just be moulded into the plastic, but that looks really, really well fitted. And then you've got your glazed windows. You've got your separately fitted handles on the side, your grab rails here, all the way down the side. Now I think this reversing lever, yeah, that does feel like plastic, but that again is a really, really nice finish. And just look at all the detail in amongst the wheels as well. And you've got the brake rigging fitted with this one as well, out of the box, which is a really nice touch because, yep, they can be super, super fiddly to put on. And then you've got your front bogey train. 
Now I find this interesting with this little V-shape cut out because it does mean that it gives the wheels a nice little extra bit of articulation on the track and it does say second uh, radius operating. Uh, there is, I don't know if you can make it out there, but there is a spring underneath to help this keep this down on the track as well, which again is brilliant. I know some models that I've got don't have that and it can mean that the front wheels or the front bogey is very, very light uh, and it can make it easy to derail. So it's good to know that you've got that extra assistance to help keep it down on the track. You've got a really nice chimney stack here. And yeah, that is that just looks absolutely wonderful. As from what I can tell, the paint finish on that is, I know there's no like lining on this, but that is a fantastic paint finish. And this is just the the loco itself. <laughs> Let's get into that tender. Now then, again, this is so wonderfully done. You've got an absolutely brilliant finish on the side. You've got the nice little emblem there. Again, you've got the NEM coupling on the back. You've got all that riveting on the back. You've got your springy buffers again. And look at all that detail. I mean, some of that is already fitted. You've got your various pipes fitted to the back. You've got tons of riveting. You've even got your colo there, which by the looks of it, yep, that is a removable colo too. So that is a really, really nice touch. Now let me just try and do this. Yep, there we go. So that will come out. And look at that. That means that if you choose to, then you can pop in your own coal load if you want something to look a little bit more realistic. And again, that is a wonderful touch because it just gives you that bit of extra customization with your loco and that just pops in nice and easily. So round to the side, again, we've got the brake rigging underneath and this is a really, really heavy tender as well. This is nice and heavy. You've got your, I think that's the uh, water scoop underneath. If I'm right, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think that's what that is. And then getting round to the front, I mean, look at the amount of detail on this. Again, you've got separately fitted handles. These aren't metal, but they do have a really nice finish. That is actually metal fitted across it, which is fantastic. And you've got so much detail. You've got like your little mini buffers on the front there. And this is just... I'm trying not to sound biased, but this is just so, so wonderfully looking. So there we have it. So that is the complete loco. Now you notice that it's not attached. And when I go into the uh, features about this in a quick second, I'm going to show you why. And that is another brilliant, brilliant little device by Dapol. Let's go and have a look at the features that go with this model. Right, so we've just moved this back just a slight little minute and as you can see with the features, let's get started with the detail packs. Now then, we've got a extra handrail here. Now I'm not particularly 100% sure what this is. I will have to look into that. But that looks like some sort of extra like valve or gear or something like that so we'll have to look into that one you've got a spur looks like some form of a coupling pipe here and then you've got this now like with prairie this is for a speaker to help hold the speaker in on the pcb board which i'll show you in a second which again i love this part of these locos can make them so so easy especially for beginners and then we'll get into the loco now with this. Now, if you, again, if you've saw, seen the prairie, you'll know what this is for. Oh, well, or if you're familiar with Dapple, you know what this is for. Now, we take this. We go into the cab at the front. Just trying to be careful. And, oh, there we go. And then you flick the front off. And I won't pull this one out. Um, but you use the little piece on the end you then go in you hook that under and you can pull out the PCB board and on this here you've got your 
socket for your DCC decoder and then underneath which is what our little black box is for that is where you put your little cube speaker and it all just clips in together and then pushes back into the loco and I mean how how simple is that and then all you do you just get your smoke box front and then when you well should I say when I line it up properly <laughs> there you go it pushes back on and look at that you would never know I mean this has got separately fitted parts on this as well there's no damage done to that and you wouldn't even know that it will come off it's just so well done so moving on and uh, we have I did show you just at the beginning but we have these metal etched plates and one thing again that I like with this is that sometimes these come on like um, like a little blister that you have to try and cut off and then sand down yourself and these are just ready to stick on straight away if you choose to do so so you've got no messing around you can just pop them straight on there and that is a really really nice little touch so this bit I absolutely love now for me in the more modern locos what I've had and what I've owned the bane of them for me is the connection to the tender and the reason for this is you've got wires going there you've normally got like a like a, a really tiny thin little drawbar that you have to like hook underneath I don't know what I'm doing with my hands there but you have to try to hook underneath um, and when you try to pick it up because it's all connected you've got to be so careful that you don't like bend or even snap that bar as you're picking the local up and this is what I love about this so we have this connector here and as you can see it's uh, I think it's a kin kinematic kinematic they're called coupling and as you can see how much that moves and if we just try and bring this closer you can see the connections on the top and again on the bottom and then we get to the tender and the if you will is a socket and that connects it's got exactly the same motion as you can see and this is how easy it is to connect you simply put them together and push and you get that little click and look at how well that is fitted you've got your plate oh your your spacer plate I think it's called covers absolutely perfectly and then as you can see you've got a really really nice range of movement from this and you can see really nicely into the cab as this is going along yep sorry about the noises I'm sliding that on, on my worktop but yeah that is such an absolute wonderful design and then to pull it apart that's it absolutely wonderful wonderful design and I really think this this is probably for me I think this is the best coupling design that I've that I've seen on on locos it's so simple and it works so well just quickly as well there was one bit that I did forget to tell you about and with the features with this is that this is also got a die cast plate and this makes this loco really really nice and heavy and also if you look in here you have a flickering firebox too so just think guys I mean even if you were to buy this model at the full retail price from uh, Dapol, just look at how much you're getting for your money. It's absolutely incredible, especially when you know certain prices are what they are, and you don't get this amount of detail or extras already built in. It's kind of really, really something to think about. So yeah, so I will say like a, a huge thank you again to Dapol for what they're giving the customer for the money what they're asking for it's absolutely incredible it really really is so with that being said let's get this out of shot and let's have a quick look at the manual what you get with this 
So as you can see, again, it's a really nice fully coloured manual. What you get, you've got a parts list again in the back, which this I think is fantastic. It makes it so easy for you to find if you've got any of you know your little parts that you need to reorder. Not that hopefully not that you should do, but it's handy to have it there just in case. And you've got your specification list there, so as we can see, you know, your sprung buffers, your die cast chassis, and then you've got your DCC speaker and you've got your flickering firebox effect there again so yeah this is a as normal a great great little manual and i believe if you go here let me just try and hold this up a bit better that's what that is it's a little sandy leaf what we found before so i'll just pause this for a second if you want to have a quick look and read about that unless you already know what that is and then yeah so a great great little manual to go with this so here is the loco and now i think i have covered everything so let's get down to the good bit let's get this down on the railway and let's see how this runs okay so here we have it down on the railway uh now i do normally try and shoot these in a natural light so you can see you know more like the color uh, what you would expect down on the railway uh, but unfortunately it's a really dark dull day outside so we've adjusted the light slightly we have got the room light on so I do apologize if this doesn't maybe look the best um, but unfortunately at the minute I've not got like a better light setup so yeah so we'll just have to make the best that we can do and hopefully you guys will still enjoy it so here it is down on the track and let's have a look at it moving let's see because i like to see how slow these things can go so we're just bringing that up slowly oh it is in reverse it meant to be forwards but that is on my controller about 15. and look at in how incredibly slow and smooth that is moving that is wonderful so not only does the price reflect on the uh, the looks of the model, but it also reflects on how it operates as well. Now, actually looking at the camera, I have noticed one thing. That middle wheel is just sticking slightly. So just bear with me one second. Uh, and I'm just going to have a very, very quick look at this. Right, okay, so we're back. Now, what it is, it isn't a problem by any means. What is on this, the way they have the... Because sometimes I, I tend not to go into the mechanism too much. But on here, instead of having a traditional wiper on the back of the wheel, they've actually got it's like a coupling what sits on top of the wheel, putting a bit of pressure on. Now, that does mean that there is more resistance on these wheels. Um, so, you know, maybe that's something that could be done slightly differently. Uh, but for me, it's no, by no means a deal breaker. And actually, if you think about this, where the wipers normally at the back of the wheels, sometimes I've found with certain uh, locos that the wipers will actually move like away from the wheels, you know, as it's kind of doing this and moving around the track. But if it's sat on top of the wheels, then it's more likely to always have contact with the wheels. So that can actually be a really, really good idea. Um, I mean, without looking into it, I mean, maybe there's a way it could be uh, sprung or something like that to bit, you know, provide a bit less resistance. But hopefully in time that should free off. And again, that is by no means a deal breaker. And I think that can actually be quite a good idea. So let's have a look at this moving again. Let's just do it a little bit quick and let's see. We have some points here and let's send it the right way. That'll be wonderfully helpful. So let's have a look at it. And it is so smooth and quiet. It's incredible. I just got no problems with those points whatsoever. And it says this has got pickups on all but the bogey wheel. So let's try something. Let's just stop it there for a quick second on the actual points and let's just try starting it again and look at that that is going over those points at an absolute snail's pace of a crawl that is fantastic 
That is so wonderful. Now what I am going to do is, and we're going to take the camera off, we're going to switch this light off so it's going to get dark. And then we're going to have a look at that flickering firebox. And again, I am really, really excited to have a look at this. Because if this looks anything like the last one, it's such a wonderful, wonderful little feature. So let's go and have a look at that right now. Okay, so I'm going to try and get this the best that I can. But I am free holding this. So what we will do, let's just do this. And let's put a bit of power into this loco. And look at that already. That is only on about 20 to 30 percent of my controller, and yeah, it is flashing on the camera, but that is just flicking away so lovely. Let's just turn up the speed a little bit. As you can hear, there's plenty of power in that local because those wheels are really trying to pull this train, and that is such a great little feature. And because of the way this loco is um, like made and designed because you've got so much access to that cab you can easily see this running around so let's just turn that off and that is fantastic so right what we'll do i'll just try and quickly let's see if we can very professionally move this camera away and get a slightly different angle on this so right what we'll do we shall put some coaches on this and now with this being torquey manor which I was made up with that name because it's, as you know, it's one of my favourite places to visit. Um, I've got some Torquay Pullman coaches, so I'm super excited. So let's get them on with this and let's have a, maybe one or two other engines join it. And uh, we'll have a little watch of it going round and then we'll finish up. So stay tuned for that and let's get cracking. Okay, so what we've done, we have turned the camera light off. I thought, let's try this with a bit of different lighting. Hopefully you guys won't mind it. And uh, yeah, kind of like a bit of like a summery EV type light lighting is what we're going to go for today. You just see how that looks. I mean, you may notice it change if I don't think it looks the best. But let's just get this uh, kicking off. So... We've got the other Dapple, the Large Prairie, which I said, again, was such an amazing model. So we've got some Pullmans on that. And these ones are special ones because these have the lights in the coaches. And then we shall get this one moving. Now, this has got the Torquay Pullman coaches on. So let's send that off on its way. And that just looks so, so nice, even in this lighting. So yeah, we may do something about that. We'll see how it goes. Well, there she is on her way. So let's have a look at this running and then what we'll do, we'll do like a little bit of a summary towards the end. Okay, so there we have it, the amazing Dapol Manor Class. Now, for me, I cannot recommend this highly enough. For what you're getting for the amount of money that you're spending is absolutely incredible. There's models out there with less detail, far less features, 
for a lot more money. So for me, if you are after a mana class, um, basically get a dap on mana class. <laughs> oh, these are just so, so amazing. I know it sounds like I'm going on a little bit, but again, I just can't get over what you get for the price. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Leave me a big thumbs up if you've liked it and subscribe. That would be absolutely fantastic. And let's just leave looking at that for a quick second. What an incredible, incredible um, model that you're getting there. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and hopefully we shall see you in the next video.